Today's Tech Talk DevOps edition is focused on tips for a successful open telemetry deployment. Tech Talks are a series of short webinars that are deep dives for technical practitioners. I value your time today and I'm excited to share with you these best practices so that you can leverage them in your daily role. I'm your host today, Jonathan Campos, a senior product marketing manager focused on observability, and I'm excited to be here with you on today's Tech Talk. Let's get started. In today's agenda, we'll go over some helpful tips for a successful open telemetry deployment. We'll go through a demo on applying these helpful tips to your open telemetry deployment. And finally, we'll discuss some additional resources to continue your Splunk journey. Let's get started. Telemetry aids observability. Telemetry data isn't observability itself. It's really what aids us in really understanding what's going on with our application. And instrumentation code is exactly how we get this telemetry. And this telemetry data can include traces, logs, and metrics. So we need to understand that telemetry is what exactly aids observability. Now we instrument our code using a specific observability framework. That of course, in this case, is open telemetry. Now, many of you know that OpenTelemetry is a set of APIs, SDKs, tooling, and integrations that are designed for the creation and management of telemetry data, such as traces, metrics, and logs. Now, the OpenTelemetry Collector offers a vendor-agnostic implementation of how we receive, process, and export telemetry data. And it really removes the need to run and operate and maintain multiple agents and collectors. Really, you own your data because this is an open standard. Now, the collector is responsible for sending all of your telemetry data to a backend environment like Splunk. Now, let's take a look at some helpful tips that can help us become successful when deploying the open telemetry collector. Having your deployment environment associated with your workloads can be helpful when trying to really narrow down bottlenecks within multiple environments. And there are several ways to ensure that the backend service, like Splunk, displays the correct application environment. If we have multiple environments, we're really not going to know exactly where these workloads reside, what environment they're associated to, and it can become quite confusing. We can see on the left that telemetry was sent to Splunk APM with no environment information. And you can see on the right that our telemetry data does include environment information. How can we confirm that our telemetry data is in fact sending a deployment environment? The first option is to use environmental variables. You can use these environmental variables for all of the operating systems that the open telemetry collector is supported on. For Linux, we'll simply add an environmental variable. In this case, we're using Splunk shop as our deployment environment, as well as for Windows. You can do the same. And for Kubernetes, we simply inject the environmental variable to the container's configuration by adding it to the deployment file. Here's the example below where we've identified Splunk shop as our deployment environment. The second option is to define the deployment environment using a processor, and we apply it to the open telemetry pipeline. You can see from the example below that we're using the resource add environment processor. We identify the action, which is insert, the value, which in this case is production environment, and then the key, which is deployment.environment. This automatically tells our backend systems what our deployment environment is, which in this case is production environment. The second tip that I have for you is how to extract your running configuration from a given host running the open telemetry collector. We can use this curl command here, and the great thing is that it redacts secure information like tokens and passwords in the event that you wanna share this with other engineers for easy troubleshooting. Take a look at the example below where we can see the access tokens are both redacted for each of these sections within the configuration file. The third tip is confirming if the open telemetry collector is in fact collecting data. Now there's a couple of options here. One option is using Z pages to view actively captured trace spans. 
you simply have to uncomment the endpoint on your on your open telemetry configuration file and then navigate to the URL that you see here which is in this case localhost port 55679 forward slash debug forward slash traces and the good news is is that this actually listens on all interfaces running the open telemetry collector this is pretty handy in the event that you're running a Linux machine that doesn't have a local browser readily available. This is what the Z pages looks like on the browser. You can see all of the latency samples being collected. You'll see those numbers increase for each given latency timeframe. And then if you actually click on one of those given timeframes, you'll see the example of the trace that's captured by the open telemetry collector on the given host. Another great way to visualize if your collector is collecting and exporting data is to enable the logging exporter. To do so, all you have to do is navigate to the OpenTelemetry Collector's configuration file, and in this file, simply enable the logging exporter. And you can do this as part of your traces and logging pipeline, and you can see an example of that below where we've enabled that for our logging pipeline. Take a look at that highlighted text where we've specified logging next to the Splunk Heck exporter. Now let's take a look at an example of what the logging exporter looks like on Linux. We'll simply run the journal CTL command and we'll begin to see the logging exporter show all of the telemetry data exported using the logging exporter on our terminal screen. Here's a small example of what that looks like. Now let's take a look at a demo where I'll walk through how to apply these helpful tips for your open telemetry deployment. Hi everyone, today we'll walk through a demo on how to apply some helpful tips for a successful open telemetry collector deployment. Starting with tip number one, in the event that you are faced with incorrect deployment name, or you want to change your deployment name, or maybe you don't have a deployment name. Let's say you're faced with possibly the incorrect name where you don't want this environment like Tech Talk Environment 1, or potentially your environment is associated to an environment name known as unknown, and you may want to change that. Well, here's one helpful tip where we can use the open telemetry processors and successfully change this name for all of our telemetry data or add a particular deployment environment. To do that, we'll go into the console here. And the first thing I want to do is highlight that we are in the Etsy Hotel Collectors directory for this particular Linux machine that's running the Splunk Open Telemetry Collector. And we'll confirm that we're in fact running the Splunk Open Telemetry Collector by doing a quick status check and ensuring that this collector is in fact running on this host machine. The next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is take a look at our configuration file which happens to be in this directory. Now you'll see that there's several configuration files here, but specifically we want to target agent underscore config.yaml. If we do a quick nano into this file here, we'll see that we can edit this particular YAML file so that we can include the processor that contains the deployment.environment value for the uh, for us to add a deployment environment or change a deployment name for all of our telemetry that we're emitting to a backend system. So let's take a look at that definition. As you can see, well, we do have one already defined here, and that is tech talk test one as the value and the key is deployment dot environment. We'll go ahead and just change this to let's say tech talk test one, two, three. And we'll do that as a new name so that we can ensure that all of our telemetry data sent to a backend system like Splunk APM contains this deployment environment. And then the next thing that we want to go ahead and do is scroll down to our pipelines for our traces and go ahead and apply this particular processor. All right. So as you can see, it's currently commented out. If it's not there for you, which by default it's not, we'll go ahead and just simply type this as part of this definition here. So we're just going to go ahead and comment that out. And we're going to do the same for the logs as well. We'll comment that out and we'll go ahead and save the file. 
And once we've saved the file, we'll go ahead and restart the Hotel Collector service. So let's just say restart. And let's type our password here and confirm that the service is in fact up by typing service Splunk Hotel Collector status. And we can see that yes, in fact, the service is up and running. All right, great. So now we'll go back to our dashboard here. We're gonna need to wait about a minute or two so that we can go ahead and see that change. All right, it's been about a minute or two. Let's go ahead and give us a quick refresh and let's see if our change is in fact in place. All right, we're gonna go to, to the hamburger menu here and let's click on APM. And now we should have tech talk test one, two, three. And of course that's the value that we went ahead and added to that particular processor. We can select that and we can see that this particular microservices environment is now associated to tech talk test one, two, three. And how we know that is of course, because this particular server is running the microservices that you actually see here. And of course, the Hotel collector that's running on this machine is of course collecting all of the telemetry and sending it to Splunk APM. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and take a look at an easy way to share our configuration that's secure. Now, in some cases, we may wanna collaborate with other engineers and share our configuration, but we wanna do it where it's secure. So this particular endpoint here, you can see that this particular endpoint, if we actually curl it, will have the ability of seeing our configuration. And if we take a look all the way in the top here, you can see that the access token for this exporter, as well as the access token for this exporter has been redacted. So the good news is you can just quickly copy and paste this information and send it to a fellow engineer and you guys can collaborate easily and securely without having to worry about access tokens kind of getting mixed up or falling through the cracks. So that's another great tip by just curling this given endpoint right here. And the next tip is going to help us with respect to confirming if we're in fact collecting data. And to do that, we're gonna enable Z pages. Now, Z pages is defined as an extension in your configuration file. So what I'm going to quickly do is let's just do a quick cat of our configuration file. And this is a, a slightly modified configuration file just because we've now added that resource, that, that particular processor, that is. But if we take a look at it by default, if you scroll all the way to the top of the configuration file, under extensions, you'll see that you'll have Z pages. Now, Z pages allows you to see all of your trace spans that are being collected by the open telemetry collector. And it's just a cool way just to confirm that you are in fact receiving data. Let's go ahead and we've already uncommented that out, but normally you will find that it does have a comment. So if you do have it commented, all you're going to do is use your favorite editor. In this case, I'm using Nano. And you'll simply just remove that hash tag right in front of Z pages, and that will go ahead and enable it. So you'll see it like this. You'll just simply remove those hashes and go ahead and save that configuration and restart the service once again. And once the service has been restarted, confirm that the service is in fact up and running with a quick status check and we can see that it is in fact running. So this particular server being Ubuntu server, we don't have a browser that's readily available. You can easily navigate to the URL that actually shows the Z pages from a remote machine. So what we'll go ahead and do is navigate to the remote URL from this machine, which happens to be my local Mac, and we'll go ahead and go to 192.168.86.20 on port 55679, and we'll go to debug traces. And right here, we'll be presented with our Z pages. And this particular page happens to show you all of your latency samples. And you can quickly just select one and you'll see all of the traces that have been in fact collected.
So this is, again, one helpful way to confirm that you're, in fact, receiving telemetry or specifically traces and metrics. For our next tip, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how we can use the logging exporter to confirm that we are, in fact, exporting data correctly to a given backend system like Splunk APM or Splunk infrastructure monitoring and so on and so forth. To do that, what we'll go ahead and do is enable the logging exporter. Now, by default, the Splunk distribution of the open telemetry collector already has one to found for you. So let's take a look at that. If we actually go and run a quick cat on the configuration file, we can see right here under debug, under our definitions, and let's not miss that. Oh, I think I've scrolled a little bit past that. I'm sorry. Right here, we can see under debug that we have logging and then logging level debug. And in order to apply the logging exporter as an exporter for your traces, all you simply have to do is within the pipeline for your traces and for your logs over here, all you have to do is just add the logging exporter. So in this case, we have a few other exporters for our traces. We'll go ahead and add logging and we'll do the same for logs as well. You can see that logging has uh, been applied there as an exporter for logs. Great. So normally by default, you don't have that there, but once you apply that, you'll simply, once again, just do a quick restart of the service. And we'll just do that again, just so you guys can see that command. And it is service Splunk Hotel Collector restart. And then we'll go ahead and use journal CTL to go ahead and use this against the service to see all of the logs that are coming in. And of course, the logging exporter will then show us all of the telemetry data that we are in fact receiving. And we're going to go ahead and stop that because it's going to continue to scroll over and over. And what we'll go ahead and do, let's inspect some of these attributes. You can see all of the metadata of all of these spans here. And you can see the trace ID, you can see the parent ID. You can also see here our deployment environment. Let's take a look. Here it is. And you can see our deployment environment. And you can see all of the information that we're actually sending to our backend system as part of this particular deployment. Thanks so much for watching this demo, and I hope that these tips can help you with your open telemetry journey. Before we wrap things up, I want to quickly share some great resources available to you to continue your journey with observability. You'll receive these assets in a follow up email as well as the recording. Also, don't forget that we have an incredible community of Splunk users on our community site. You can search for the answers section on Open Telemetry and continue the conversation for this talk within the discussion sections called Tech Talks. Here you will find additional resources as well as Splunk ideas, where you can submit new product enhancements or vote for current ideas from other customers. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to join us today. Be sure to tune back in for future Tech Talks.